And joining me now is Vince Colonnais, editorial director at The Daily Caller. Vince, welcome back. Always so great to see you. We've got a lot to get to today, uh, but I want to start off talking about vaccine mandates and the latest development regarding the military, with a judge ordering the DOD and the Navy to pause disciplinary action against a group of Navy SEALs for refusing the jab. Your thoughts? Well, the military ha is supposed to be giving out religious exemptions to those service members who sincerely and earnestly request them. And what we've discovered over the length of time that the vaccine mandate has existed is that almost none of the religious exemption requests that have been put in by service members have been granted by the military. The, the military routinely has decided that, that those religious exemption requests are unmerited, and then they say, you've got to get the vaccine anyway. So what has that led to? It's led to hundreds of service members from all of the services uh, being discharged from the military, thus, of course, hurting military res readiness, and very few religious exemptions being given. And now a judge has said, this is deeply suspicious, and not only is it suspicious, but it could very well be unconstitutional. If you are eligible, if you, if you come with a sincerely held religious view and say, this vaccine is not right for me because of that religious view, then it needs to be sincerely treated. Uh, and so far, the military has, has, by any observer standards, not shown evidence that it is seriously treating these uh, religious exemption requests with the uh, care that they deserve. Another thing I want to talk about, Vince, uh, is President Biden. As you know, he's traveling today. Uh, he went to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to promote his infrastructure plan. Uh, strangely enough, a bridge collapsed in the city this morning. Also pretty curious, uh, two top Democrats passed on meeting with the president, citing scheduling conflicts uh, similar to what happened when he was in Georgia. Uh, let's talk more about that. Well, it's not hard to see the relationship between Joe Biden's rock bottom approval ratings and the fact that you have Democrats who are in very tough races in their own states who are not interested in appearing on stage with him for fear of the damage that it could do to their candidacies. Those two top Democrats you're referring to are both a gubernatorial and a Senate candidate in Pennsylvania running this year. And they are not going to be appearing on stage with the most famous Democrat in the country. And the same was true of Stacey Abrams in Georgia, as you're pointing out. Uh, Stacey Abrams, famous for her uh, concern about voting laws and the ways that she'd like to see Democrats take control of voting laws nationwide. Joe Biden goes to her state to make a case to do that very thing. She doesn't appear on stage with him. Her signature issue, she skips out on that event. Yeah. Uh, also, somber day in New York today. A funeral was held uh, for a fallen officer as police officers across the nation we see are being targeted. Six cops have been shot in the last two days. Uh, Vince, what do you think is driving this increase in violence around the country? Well, unfortunately, it it uh, falls on the shoulders of the people who are supposed to be keeping us safe, and that includes prosecutors uh, in, in many of our American cities. We look, of course, as you're talking about St. Patrick's Cathedral this morning, a funeral uh, for Officer Jason Rivera of the New York Police Department, ambushed last week, killed last week, alongside one of his fellow officers. Uh, and his widow this morning, during her eulogy for her husband, placed blame in no small part on the district attorney, Alvin Bragg of Manhattan, uh, saying that the system has failed us uh, and that she is and that her and her husband were tired of these new laws, especially the ones from the new district attorney. What she's referring to is his approach of going soft on crime and soft on criminals and especially criminals who hurt and target cops. That is the kind of thing that is only emboldening the skyrocketing uh, incidents of violent crime we're seeing in the United States. And you now see some Democrats even who are very uncomfortable with these decisions by these DAs. The New York governor, for instance, Kathy Hochul, coming out yesterday and warning that she has power here to remove the district attorney in Manhattan. Absolutely. Well, Vince, thank you so much. Always great to get your insight. Always appreciate it. Thank you, Tracy.